Well, hello there, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. You join us exactly where we left off the last time. We are still in the canteen after having a pleasant after-hours meal with a certain blonde bombshell. So let's pick up where we left off. It's strange that she left in such a hurry. A bundle of keys left in the door lock caught my attention. I was going to catch up with Slavia, but where does she live? And knocking on every door in the middle of the night doesn't sound like a bright idea. Joe. Hmm. Let's take the keys. Leaving them seems like a bad idea. I'd better take them. I'll give them back tomorrow, after trying a few locks, because who knows what'll happen here at night. Possibly me. Such thoughts gave me the chills. It's me who needs to be careful here in the first place. Yes, cover my tracks. The night, though dark, wasn't silent at all. One could hear the chirping ch crickets, the song of the night birds, and rustling trees from everywhere. How on earth do you rustle trees? Never mind. Uh, a sudden desire to follow Slavia's advice and go to the camp leader's cabin appeared. I don't know why, but the sight of the unknown bronze builder of communism put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that had happened today. That was all my constructive mood could offer. Here was much brighter than near the canteen, and tardy pioneers were running by, so this place didn't seem scary at all. Bus, summer camp, girls, girls. I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. I heard a barely noticeable rustle nearby. I wish Russell would stop trying to sneak up on me. I shivered and looked in that direction. A girl. Reading a book. Lena. I decided to move closer and talk. She was the only new person I'd met here without exchanging even a few words. Hi, what are you reading? A book. Lena was so surprised, she even jumped. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. But if you could jump up and down a little bit more, I would appreciate it. Never mind. She blushed and started at the book again. So, what are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone with the Wind. A good book. Thanks. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it, but I think such literature suits her very well. Either that or she had gas, one or the other. Lena didn't seem to be interested in continuing the conversation. Well, if I'm bothering you. No. She answered while still looking at the book. Can I sit beside you for a while? Why? One of those perverts I heard about, aren't you? And really, why? Maybe because I was very tired and having company is better than being alone. And maybe I wanted to try and find something out from her. I carefully examined Lena. But no, I doubt that. Well, I don't know. I'm not allowed to. Feel free. But if I'm bothering you... No, you're not. I can leave, just say. Everything's alright. Sit down, damn it, sit down! Okay then. I sat on the edge of the bench carefully. After such an intense talk, staying here was the last thing I wanted to do, but it wouldn't be nice just to stand up and leave. That didn't really go well, huh? Lena hasn't answered anything. It seems I made a fool out of myself. I bet if Uliana was here, she'd have a good laugh at me. Do you enjoy being here? I recalled Slavia's question and thought it would be a good start for a conversation. Yes? She smiled slightly. I guess I like it too. Lena definitely isn't very sociable and probably cannot carry on a meaningless conversation as easily as Slavia. But there was something about her that attracted attention. 
like a momentary glimpse of a reflection on the glass uh, on a rainy autumn evening, which makes you turn around and stare into darkness, searching for something that you saw at the corner of your eye. Of course, you weren't able to distinguish or understand what it was, but it still felt so tempting. Lena was still reading the book without paying any attention to my presence, and I had no intention of asking her anything about this camp or this world in general. Beautiful night. Yes. How in the world would you start a conversation with her? It's late. I have to go. Yes, it's quite late. Good night. Night. There was something strange about this girl. At first glance, she is a typically shy and modest pioneer girl, but... The mystery of Lena took its own place in the massive list of mysteries about this camp which I'd started to put together in my head. Ellipsis. A lazy evening. There's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. I headed towards Olga's cabin. The light in the house was on. I let myself in, hoping she was changing. Hello, Semyon. You are quite late. I was expecting you earlier. Yeah. I went for a walk to look around the camp. All right. You will be sleeping here. In the dog basket at the foot of my bed. She pointed her finger at one of the beds. Right here. I was a bit surprised. On the other hand, perhaps she's taking the other bunk. Yes. Is there something wrong? We're out of free cabins, anyway. The camp leader smiled, but I, I rather think it was out of politeness. You want to be a decent pioneer, don't you? There was a clear emphasis on the word decent. Yep, sure. I was lost in thought for a moment. Don't you... don't you mind it, mademoiselle? She looked at me oddly, with surprise and some offence in her eyes. A pioneer should respect their elders. Olga said strictly. Of course he should, no one argues with that. I blathered, not realising what was wrong. Shouldn't you also? She stared at me. Oh dear, that is a scary face. Under such a gaze, even Mithril forged by the best dwarf miners from the deepest dungeons would melt. Should I what? What's up, toots? Annoyance and a lack of understanding made me raise my voice. You must address adults appropriately. You've been very naughty. You will be punished. Of course, there are a lot of strange things here. But this girl is just a couple of years older than me. Or maybe even younger. But I decided not to argue. Well, up to a few minutes ago, I'd have never called her an adult. I had to admit, she was also given a strong character. And in any case, I wasn't in a position to argue. As you say, ma'am. I mumbled. That's much better. It learns. It learns it does. That's how a decent pioneer should conduct itself. And now it's time to sleep. You may sleep at my feet. Honestly speaking, I was going to become neither a decent nor an indecent pioneer. Just yesterday, I wasn't going to become a pioneer at all. But do I have a choice now? If you want to, we'll have to make you. This is the motto Olga was probably going to use. I climbed into bed and closed my eyes, only to realise how tired I was after today. Something hammered in my head awfully, as if my brains had started a night shift. 
and they seem to be aimed more at rolling steel than working on something more sensitive. The bus threw through my mind. And the square with the monument. The canteen full of pioneers. And the malicious face of Liliana. Slavia. Lena. And even recalling Alyssa didn't give me much of a negative feeling. What if I'm here for good? I was having a dream. It seemed like I was in some sort of vacuum with nothing but nothing around me. But not only around, I was the only creature in the universe. As if the universe had returned to a state of singularity right before the Big Bang. And something was just about to happen. Suddenly I heard a voice. I could not make out the words, but it sounded familiar. The voice was whispering something gently, as if soothing me. And then I realized. It was the voice of that strange girl from the bus. The girl from the dream. But what is she saying to me? Who is she? I woke up. Bright sunlight struck my eyes. It was almost noon. After stretching lazily on the bed and yawning, I started to recall the previous day. In a few seconds, all these events passed before my eyes. The bus, the camp, the local inhabitants, the girl in the bikini. No, that's just wrong. Bad thoughts. Bad. Not this whole situation. Not me being here. It was wrong by default. My attitude towards what was happening was wrong. Because yesterday I fell asleep here just like that and before I chatted nicely with the local pioneers and managed to crack a few jokes. Now how can I act like that in such a situation? I should be frightened, startled by every little rustling, should avoid all contact with the potentially hostile creatures. The last day's events were getting hazy, like I'd had a hangover. This really feels like a morning after a heavy drinking party. Yesterday's natural, flawless, absolutely normal conduct becomes a nightmare in the morning, a grotesque illustration from the Divine Colony. Yes, just like that, and I can't change the past now. Then again, I had probably assessed the situation and was acting accordingly. I glanced around, trying to figure out whether I'd th been thrown somewhere else, but Olga's cabin looked the same as yesterday. Everything seemed to be in its place, except for a pioneer uniform which was hanging from the bedhead. I fumbled with it with distrust and tried it on. It was Olga's, but it looked good on me. At least this is better than walking around in winter's clothes. I wish I could see myself. I bet I look like a clown. And for that, I needed a red nose. Sorry, I needed a mirror. At least a tiny one. I found he found one in the wardrobe door. Holy, holy ellipsis. I looked at the newfound pioneer and jumped away in surprise. There was some teenager on the other side of the mirror. He resembled me, but he wasn't me. Where did this the weak snubble go? Where were the bags under my eyes, the slouch, that deathly fatigue on my face? It seemed I had not been thrown back in time or into a parallel reality, but instead had simply changed bodies with someone else. Right, that's real simple. Such things happen every day. I took a closer look at this stranger and only then realized it was actually me. It just wasn't today's me. It was the one from before my school and university years. Well, at least that's something. There you go. The person in extreme situation did fail to notice the elephant in the room after all. But the camp leader noticed it, and last night she told me off for addressing her without proper respect. Ah, screw that. I doubt my appearance affects anything else. If the clock is not lying, breakfast was long over. Oh well, I'll try to find something in the canteen. It worked out yesterday with Slavia, didn't it? 
those memories made me smile involuntarily. The sun was shining brightly outside, a light breeze was blowing. A beautiful summer's day. I would not felt so good in the morning for several years. All problems were gone, vanished into clouds which were as white as snow. Olga came out of nowhere. Good morning, Semyon. Morning. I smiled, doing my best to show that, no matter what, my morning was indeed good. You only arrived yesterday, so I decided not to wake you up. But breakfast... Never mind. Here, take this. She handed me something wrapped in paper. Judging by the oily stains, there had to be sandwiches inside. Oh, thank you. Now, go wash yourself. Anoint yourself. Prepare for the ceremony. No, go wash yourself. I was about to leave. Wait a second. Olga quickly ran to the house and came out to shove a small bag into my hands. Inside it I found a toothbrush, soap, a small towel and something else. I did not look too closely. A pioneer should always be clean and tidy. Let me do your neckerchief properly this first time. Yours is askew. You should do it yourself once you learn how to. Do we have to? I'm going to wash myself now. Yeah, right. It could get hooked on the tap and strangle me. Fine. Later then. And don't forget about the lineup. Pencils, paper, drawing lines. You don't forget such things. What lineup? What do you mean, what lineup? She frowned. It's Monday today. Weird. By my approximation, it should have been Sunday. Then again, a shift of the day of the week is hardly the worst thing. Usually we have lineups in the morning before breakfast, but it's Monday today, so we're having it at twelve o'clock. Don't be late. All right, but where? At the square. Where else? There was no reason to argue. I headed to the bathing place. The bathing place! I knew I could forget about separate showers and toilet, but the sight of all this malfunctioning symptoms of a decaying socialism, a funny turtle with tin shell, poor taps and ceramic belly, I felt sick. I was not a squeamish person, but nevertheless, standing there I realised there was still some minimal level of habitual comfort, which I found it troubled them to do without. It's often like that. When you lose things that you thought were ordinary and common, you suddenly understand how essential they were. Ah, <sighs> screw this. As if I have any choice. The water was ice cold. While washing my hands was not an issue, washing my face and my mouth became a big problem. There was no toothpaste in the bag which Olga gave me. I could brush my teeth without it, but there was a small round box wrapped in the towel. Tooth powder. Cute. One point for being somewhere in the past. I washed myself quite quickly, also due to the ice cold water. Someone was coming quickly, or more like running towards me. I turned around. It was Slavia, dressed in a tracksuit. The girl would probably look uh, good in anything. Pioneer uniform, bikini, probably even a spacesuit. Hey there. Oh, hi, I mean, was a, a good morning, yeah. Oh yeah, real smooth. Why didn't you come for breakfast? I overslept. I said it as if I was proud of it. But Olga gave me some sandwiches. Oh, great then. Don't forget about the line-up. Yeah, sure. As if I could forget. Right, I gotta run. Enjoy yourself. She waved goodbye to me and disappeared around the path's bend. Looks like it's a couple of minutes until the line-up. I should quickly pass by my home to drop off my washing bag and eat the sandwiches and then head to the square. I swung the door of the cab he was cabin open and rushed inside, as if jumping into the last car of a departing train. 
It didn't turn out to be the best idea, because inside I found Olga. Who was changing? I froze on the spot, trying not to breathe. Finally, the camp leader noticed me. Semyon. I looked away immediately. Have you heard of knocking? Now get out! Yeah, that was real clumsy. Although I did enjoy the sight. Olga followed me out in a minute. Here, yeah, take this. Now it is your home too. She handed me a key. I put it in my pocket. Home. Of course, if you disregard how fantastical the current events were, this camp was far from being the worst place on earth, but to call it home? Just after one day spent here? But you will never leave. I doubt it will ever be able to do so. All right, let's go. We're late. But what about the sandwiches? Just eat them on the way. We were passing in the lines of the pioneers' cabins while I was tucking into the ham sandwiches, and Olga kept on talking and talking. She was buzzing like a game of operation with Parkinson's. But I cared about nothing but the food. Understood? Huh? You weren't listening. Sorry. Today is the first day of your new life as a pioneer. And you should do your best so that it becomes a happy life. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. I'm serious. A pioneer has many duties. Great responsibility is conferred upon him. To participate in social work. To help his juniors. To study and study and study again. Oh, you're absolutely right. We here are all like one big family. And you will become a part of it. Yeah, a part. I'd even sign a party membership card if it would save me from listening to this nonsense. I hope that after your term is over, you will keep the most pleasant memories about our camp. Memories that will last your whole life. And when will this term end? Why do you keep asking silly things? It seems I won't get any information from her. A shame, really. This world appears to be so friendly, but I, I never it never bothered to introduce itself to me. Perhaps now I can take some things easier than yesterday. It seems like I have some unspoken ceasefire with it. It isn't trying to hurt me, but I'm forbidden from asking questions. Of course, this situation isn't a pleasant one, but what can I do about it? A bad peace is better than a good dispute. The most important thing for you to know is to make the best of your time you will spend here. I'll do my best. Honestly, I was very tired of this conversation. It would be good to know where that here is. But... We came to the square. Right, I think we're going to leave it there, guys. We've actually got into day two! Yay! And we didn't get to see um, Olga in her underwear, which has left me quite disappointed, to be honest with you, but never mind. Alright, we'll pick this up again next week. Until then, I am Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you, and good night.